miles, 600 miles off of uh, the Big Island, Hawaii. It's the eighth day of our voyage. Uh, I decided this eighth day that I was feeling lucky enough to try and make a video documentary of the experiences so far. Uh, this has been, for sure, unlike any other experience I have ever had in my life. Fancy that. Yeah, I'll try to sum up the first eight days. Uh, the first left Sunday from Hilo about 12:30 in the afternoon. Um, for the from the first or second hour after we left the breakwater into the into the ocean to Thursday, I was seasick. fascinated by that seasickness actually, which was an interesting thing to experience. Um, vomiting from the beginning eventually ended up wearing this Dramamine patch behind my ear for the next four days, but was still really pretty unable to do anything that involved anything like concentrating or thinking or uh, expending physical energy, uh, making food, being inside the boat, reading, working any of the sails. I could steer. That was that was doable because uh, I could just sit there and stare at the horizon. Um, but I was pretty useless for the first four days of the trip, um, which was a fascinating psychological experience. I wish I had had the wherewithal to make a few of these videos during that time, but there's no way I could have actually gotten into the boat where this camera was, taken the camera out of its case, and sat and talked to it without getting sick. Uh, and not without vomiting, but without being like overwhelmed by the feeling of nausea to the point of needing to just lay down and pass out for an hour. Um, and that created this, this psychological phenomena inside of me that was totally, uh, was like paranoid and depressed and insulating and I was isolating myself from the crew and not talking to anybody and just try to sleep as much as possible and then also was hallucinating from the seasickness drugs that I was taking. So I was having all these like interdimensional conversations anytime I closed my eyes I would uh, just lay down close my eyes and all of a sudden I'd be in a conversation with somebody somewhere else um, about some topic that I can't remember at all but very like lucid vivid conversations that I'd be right in the middle of right when I, right when I closed my eyes. So I kind of like lived in this weird liminal sleep area for the first five days from Sunday through Thursday. Um, experienced no bowel movements in that point in that duration of time. Uh, lost probably about 10 pounds I figure not being able to eat nobody really ate for the first three days sailing out of Hilo was tough we were sailing upwind uh, with winds of 30 to 35 miles an hour with gusts of 42 it's pretty strong wind and uh, 10 to 16 or 12 to 20 foot sea so we're sailing against a really pretty considerable wind and going uh, beating our way into it for about three days until rounding the southern point of, uh, of, of the Big Island of Hawaii. And then we, we intermittently lost wind and gained wind. Pretty much in the first three days, we went about 100 miles. And since those three days have been over, we've been going about 100 to 120 miles a day once we've gotten down into the magnificent trade winds, which we are now experiencing um, all around us. It's actually pretty, it's pretty placid right now. It's probably 15, 10 to 15 knots of wind with six to 10 foot swell. It's really nice. We're sailing downwind. We've got the mizzen up and the storm jib pulled out there. And we're just cruising. The wind vane is steering the boat. The rest of the crew is downstairs napping. I just woke up from a nap. Uh, we caught a mahi today, the second. Um, we've had, I think, five on the line so far. Two we've pulled in. So we had uh, fresh mahi baked in coconut oil and lemon pepper with coconut rice 
for lunch. Um, I cut and cleaned it. It was a pretty fascinating experience with a beautiful fish. Uh, and that that is pretty. You know, that's that's like a that's a pretty spot on day. Um, when by lunch you catch a fish and then spend a couple hours cleaning it and cooking it and then eat it and then everybody takes a nap after that. Super just rough out here. Um, which is not indicative of the rest of the experience so far. It's like, it's actually been pretty amazing to watch how everybody gets into the group because until Thursday, I was so sick I on Thursday told Captain Jacob that my, my mental health was deteriorating as I was starting to really the potential of uh, spending 20 days in the state that I was in, not thinking that I was going to be able to actually survive that mentally uh, or physically. I was more concerned about being able to survive it mentally because I was going to some pretty weird, dark places in my mind um, at the product of that seasickness, which is a very, it's like a specific psychological event that occurs when you're seasickness because you feel so unable to do anything, which then makes you feel insecure about letting your comrades down. And then I personally was, you know, coming into contact with all these feelings about sailing and my life with sailing and what I wanted to do with it and how seasickness was pretty much like the one thing that would prevent me from being able to realize the dreams that I have of being on the sea and after some days that went by I told Jacob about where my head was at, it was not very good and just in the moment of me expressing that to him and he replying that he too was in the hardest, experiencing the hardest moments of his life, that I was not alone in this experience. I too was feeling that I was in the in some of the hardest moments, in definitely the hardest moment of my life at that point. And um, I was pretty hard up. That shit sucked. <laughs> uh, that through that mutual recognition, everything started to change. I took some more drugs, which was definitely helpful. Um, and kind of mutually decided that that wasn't good, that, that, I, that the change in my sickness was going to occur then, and I was going to get better, so that I could continue on this trip, because I was at the point, like, you know, starting to consider in my mind, like, needing to get off the boat, or do something stupid, like, turn on the e in a panicked, in some kind of, like, fear-induced panic, all of which would have been poor things. Um, but then the next day, I felt better. And it was kind of a magical thing. Because all of a sudden I could move around the boat, and I could be inside, and I could read, and I could help with doing all the shit I like to do, like sail the boat. And that happened to be also Friday the 21st of December. Which ironically, a lot of people have been talking about. It's this like day of change, beginning of a new creation. Uh, into an era of difference than the past 26,920 years, something like that, 25, 26,000 years. And um, I thought it was very fitting that it occurred that day. I also, on that Friday, had my first bowel movement, which uh, was quite amazing. Um, it took about two hours of sitting on the pot, communicating with myself um, in many ways, uh, stretching. And I finally squeezed squeezed a couple of marshmallows out, which is pretty satisfying. Um, and since then, I've just been really building uh, defecant inertia since. You know, so that, that's going well. I took some pictures, so I'll send all of you, all of you people in Radio Land, uh, pictures of that. Um, in those four days, we had an encounter with false orcas, porpoise, the, a pod of porpoise that surrounded the boat, swam with us for a while, surfing through the waves, you could hear them through the hull, the sound of their sonar uh, being conducted through the hull, 
and they were jumping about the boat, carrying on, checking us out. We had a number of seabirds, um, caught a mahi, um, been through some rainy weather, some beautiful weather, some really strong winds, some big waves, uh, and it's been pretty fantastic, actually. Uh, it seemed like we've had a lot of discussion about how long it takes to get in the groove of this experience, and it did for Jacob on his previous crossing. Um, but I'm definitely noticing that right about now, day eight, I'm starting to feel comfortable. We're all kind of starting to feel comfortable with um, being on the boat, which is constantly moving. I don't know if you can tell that from this video, but we're rolling pretty much from like 15 degrees on one side to 15 degrees now on the other side. 15 degrees on the other side, and that, that 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 motion continues all the time. And sometimes when a wave catches us just, just right from the quarter, it really like knocks us off pretty far. Um, so sleeping has been an interesting experience to get used to because your surface is always moving, and so you, you really rely on the friction of your skin on whatever surface you're laying on to keep you from sliding off of that surface. And uh, Takes, it took me a few days to get used to having my body move while I was asleep because I would constantly be trying to prevent myself from falling. And once I just relaxed into the movement of the boat, it's actually been quite nice to fall asleep too. I feel like my back kind of gets worked out as I sleep. I haven't had any back pain, which I normally do when I wake up. Um, so yeah, it's, it's taken us about eight days and we're just starting to kind of get into the groove of things. Uh, we're still 1,600 miles away from Majuro, and that's a long way. It's like two weeks at least. Um, so we're starting to f we're starting to really we're figuring that out, and getting comfortable with it. It's still like uh, the concept of time we were talking about this afternoon is is interesting out here because it is totally elastic. And the concept of two weeks seems like this overwhelming amount of time before us, but at the same time it's only two weeks and the eight days that we've been out here, it seems like we've been out here for an overwhelming amount of time, but it's only been eight days. Uh, and so to try and kind of, to try and capture it in a schedule or in some kind of like linear idea, is very difficult because there's so the amount of saturation. Oh, here comes a friend. We had a we had a dead bird on deck today that I found while I was working on a kite right here. I'm sitting on a pile of sail. There's a dead bird here earlier on deck. And this is friend looking for it. I really like how they soar. Come and check me out. Check you guys out. Mom, can you identify that? Thanks. Uh, there's like these different, how much time was I was talking about? These different concentrations of time that occur where they'll be doing nothing, but you're always doing something, you're always moving in this crazy landscape, this changeable landscape. And then something will happen, like this bird. will come by and you'll have this experience with the bird and that will mark the passage of time in the day. It's very difficult explain. But then there will be another period of time that is completely full of just water moving, just staring at the water and the boat moving. There's, I've started reading Moby Dick. Awesome book, by the way. And uh, there's one description of a passage that Ishmael takes native friend, Kikweg, and after just 
describing one event in detail when they get on the ship, he says, nothing else no, the rest of the passage. I feel like that's kind of, you could describe days out here like that. It's like, and nothing else really happened. We sat on the boat until the sun went down and then we stood watch after eating dinner. And then there's so much else, so much other metaphor and experience going on and thought process going on in there all the time that it's really hard to, it would be hard to explain constantly what's going on because there's, at the same time, there's very little happening, very little doing. There's so much thinking and feeling and emoting and uh, processing of places that aren't here. There's definitely lots of time to think about everybody who is in my life and who I miss and would like to see. I've been thinking a lot about what I'll do with people when I get back to California. Um, lots of time to plan the future. Lots of time to kind of examine what life is and has been and try to plot a direction. Which I was talking with Jacob, it's kind of just this like escapist futurism uh, that helps you to deny the fact that you're sitting on this tiny little boat in the middle of this massive expanse and you have really no idea when it's going to end. So you can escape into your imagination of the future. I don't think that's wholly bad. I think that's part of the reason that we're all out here is to think about what we're doing in our lives and go, at least that's what I'm doing. And try to get a moment of space to slow down and think about what's going on. It feels incredibly good right now. Um, it hasn't for very long. And it, right now, as I speak these words, starts to make more and more sense. Really communicating is a, is a it's a necessity, it's like a necessity for the experience, just being able to say the things that I'm feeling, then improve the, improve the quality of what I'm experiencing. Looks like there's weather off to the north here. I'm trying to, you never really see waves very well. Yeah, so I, this is just the eighth day and I'm starting this video journal. Um, we're, we're turning now. I'm back and I have to go. I will uh, 